Well, for more on that big CBI crackdown on the former union finance minister P. Chidambaram and his son Karthi Chidambaram, the CBI is currently conducting raids as many as in eight locations in the state of Tamil Nadu. According to the reports that we have just received, these raids are going on in connection to alleged favours granted to Karthi Chidambaram, the son of the senior Congress leader P. Chidambaram, for giving foreign investment approvals to INX Media. INX Media is a company owned by Peter Mukherjee. These clearances were granted while P. Chidambaram was the finance minister. Sources indicate that Karthi Jitambaram and his companies received cash payments and shares in the company for facilitating the entire process. According to reports, INX Media in September 2008 had paid 35 lakh rupees and had allotted 60 lakh shares to Karthi Jitambaram's company Advantage Strategic Consulting and other firms. Earlier, the income tax department had seized hard disks from Karthi Jitambaram's companies. Now, these hard disks have reportedly revealed concrete evidence linking Karthi Jitambaram's companies and the media company. P. Chidambaram has issued a statement calling the raids nothing but political vendetta by the central government in an attempt to silence him. I will give a statement. I will give a statement. The father has issued a statement already. This is normal in politics. I am being targeted for political reasons. I will give a statement. I will give a detailed statement. I have already given a statement. You feel this is vendetta politics? Absolutely. Is it corresponding to the INX media team? What is it regarding? There is making up some story. Sir, were you given any? Were you given any notification before these raids? Were you told before ahead that you know anything is going to? I am being targeted systematically. I have with me from the Congress Sanjay Jha and from the BJP Gaurav Bhatia. Mr. Sanjay Jha, thanks so much for speaking to us again. The Enforcement Directorate was first investigating various aspects of the FIPB approval given in the SL Maxis deal case. That is presently still going on in courts and now, uh, you know, the raids uh, that are taking place in connection with the alleged foreign investment clearances given to a media company uh, by Karthi Chidambaram. Now, the Chidambarams are saying this is nothing but a political witch hunt, but there obviously would be something, otherwise why would the CBI conduct all of these raids? Well, you know, I think anybody who follows uh, politics very closely will tell you this, that uh, it is extremely easy to fabricate charges. Uh, we all know that in politics, making wild allegations, uh, abusing state power, becomes unfortunately par for the course over mm. a period of time. Uh, I think where the BJP is concerned, look at their track record over the last three years. Practically every opposition leader, whether it's you know in West Bengal, Bihar, Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, where you know uh, Gaurav was earlier, everywhere the the state governments of non-BJP leaders have been targeted, mm. and obviously ex-Congress leaders have always been in the line of fire where the BJP is concerned. Now you know when you have a culture of vendetta politics ingrained in the DNA of the BJP. This is not very surprising. You see, when Mr. Chidambaram made a statement today, and I think, you know, he is, by the way, also a very eminent lawyer. I'm sure Gaurav is aware of it. And, you know, he's been a, uh, he's had an excellent track record as a minister in the government. When, and he's aware of the regulatory issues under which FIPB approvals were given. End of day, it takes three years for this government to wake up. Where was it for three years on this? I don't think anybody is aware of it. So, you know, you what know, you will find I'm just ultimately, ask is, ultimately I'll tell you what is going to play but out. If I may they will just continue ask you, with this culture. If I may just ask yeah. you about... And, and, the, uh, and, and no. Mr. Chidamram will give him a fitting response. Okay. Why do you think there is, or, or rather, do you think that there is a deliberate attempt to target the Chidamram family? Because if you recall, uh, the ED summons that was sent to Karthi Chidamram in the money laundering probe in the ASL Max's deal, I remember Karthi Chidamram at that point had said in the Madras High Court as a petitioner that summons issued to him was motivated by malice in law and malice in fact. Summons part of an attempt to embarrass, humiliate and harass my family. Mr. Sanjay Jha, why would, why would there be a political witch hunt or political vendetta uh, only, you to a, yes, only to the Chidambaram family or against the uh, you know, former finance minister? 
You know, I, I can tell you if you have been following Mr. Chidambaram's writings, he's been one of our most uh, vocal uh, spokespeople when it comes to actually addressing uh, the extraordinary failures of Mr. Modi's government. I think his column in the Indian Express where he talks about that sinking feeling mm. and actually puts out a laundry list of absolutely embarrassing uh, failures of this government on all fronts from eco from the economy to democracy to freedom uh, to foreign policy mm -hmm. I, I think you know end of day the government is a highly paranoid government you know I'm sure you are a you're, you're an experienced person from mainstream media I think the world is aware I mean I'm, let me tell you this publicly of how much pressure the media operates in this country so you are witnessing basically an undeclared emergency there is a whole draconian overhang on the system NGOs are hounded, okay. uh, people are hounded uh, on, on WhatsApp groups and social media. You have public intellectuals being slaughtered. You have film stars being told to go to Pakistan when they criticize this government. And obviously politicians are easy, easy meat. You know, you just go and throw an allegation and, and you know, put an entire investigative body against them. So okay. I think, you know, the BJP's shameful and repugnant conduct does not shock people from the Congress. Okay, let me get in Gaurav Bhatia. Gaurav Bhatia, before I come to you, uh, I've just been told right now that uh, Mr. M.K. Stalin presently is speaking. I'll just dip in there and get a quick reaction as hear what he's exactly saying. <laughs> முறையாக விளக்கமாக ஒரு <laughs> Mr. Gaurav Bhatia, is this really a case of paranoia? Is this a case of megalomania from part of the BJP? Because that's the charge uh, from the Congress party. They're questioning the slow movement on the various cases uh, wh wherein, you know, the Chidambrams find themselves in trouble, whether it's the SL Maxis case or the recent money uh, that or the foreign investment clearances that has been given to INX Media. The charge from the Congress is that this is nothing but a political witch hunt. This is a malicious onslaught against the Chidambram family. There in the clear, it is just being done to harass the Chidambrams. Yeah, first of all, let me say this, that uh, the charges against uh, Karthi Chidambram and P. Chidambram are very serious. Mr. Karthi Chidambram has been charged and it, it has been alleged that he has received kickbacks for clearances from the Foreign Investment Promotion Board. Mm. And it is surprising that uh, Mr. P. Chidambaram, as the minister in charge, actually converted Foreign Investment Promotion Board into a Family Investment Promotion Board. And uh, I think, you know, when Mr. Sanjay Jha is talking about uh, all these uh, corruption charges, he should remember that if the top Congress leaders would not indulge in corruption, there wouldn't have been any occasion for the investigating agencies like the CBI in this case and the ED in the other case to investigate the matter. And is it a mere coincidence that all big scams in India start from Congress political leaders and end at the doors of uh, the Congress headquarters? It is no coincidence for them to now say that this is political vendetta is just giving a flimsy excuse. Rather, being public leaders, they should at least 
face the investigation and they should come you out know, clean. Gaurav, but I think they wish to hide to something and that is why Swami. this nervousness in the Congress camp. You know, he says that there are 21 bank accounts which have not been declared to the Reserve Bank of India. Then if there is mounting evidence against the Chidambaram family, if there is conclusive proof of, you know, their misdoings, uh, if there are these secret bank accounts, uh, then why is it that even after three years, we haven't really seen any concrete steps being taken uh, to, you know, put them behind bars or arrest, uh, you know, the, the members of the Chidambaram family if found guilty? No, Avantika, let us understand uh, these are not commoners who are indulging in some uh, straightway corruption. Yes. These are people who have resources to the most powerful thinking minds and these are complex corporate frauds. It takes a lot of time even for the investiga uh, investigating agency to probe all aspects. And yes, the investigating agencies in these cases, because of the people involved, have to ensure that there is enough evidence before they act, before they arrest these people. And I must again reiterate that be it the CBI or the Enforcement Directorate, last two, three years, there has been a healthy practice where these investigating agencies have been allowed to be autonomous and they are operating in an independent manner. And that is why, be it the Congress, the RJD, all these parties are aggrieved uh, because okay. the truth that they wanted to bury is now coming out in the open. And if the investigating agency finds incriminating material and it is only the investigating officer that can take a call regarding the arrest, they will surely be arrested. All right, uh, Mr. Gaurav Bhatia and Sanjay Jha, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to go quickly to our uh, correspondents where all the action is taking place. Coming to you first, Priyamvata. Lots uh, that has been said from both the Congress side and the BJP. But tell us what exactly is happening. Uh, you know, the Chidambrams really finding themselves in the news for all the wrong reasons, whether it was the SL Maxis case and now the foreign investment clearances allegedly given to a media company. Well, absolutely. In fact, there are so many cases against the Chidambrams which they are facing. First, we know the Asel Marxist case, the similar FIFP MB approval case, that 3,500 crores uh, worth of money was given, and 100% stake in the Asel Indian owned company was given to uh, Marxist, which belongs to Malaysia. So these are the two uh, points that have been raised by Subramanian Swami and the Supreme Court said though Maran brothers have been dissolved of the case, uh, P. Karti P. Chidambaram is still being interrogated. That is, uh, he's still in the radar. That is number one. Number two, the ED case regarding the Rajasthan ambulance scam is very much there. Only last month, uh, the Zitkwita healthcare systems was raided by the ED, ED department of which Karti Chidambaram is also one of the directors. Similarly, last year we saw the raids happening across India in various offices of Karti Chidambaram and also Vasan ICAR which came into the radar for the kickback and Karti Chidambaram's friend is one of the directors, main directors in Vasan ICAR. So the links have been established and right now this case of uh, uh, giving a FIPMB approval to a media company has also come in which Karti Chidambaram has again played the role. In fact we have the FAR copy with us in which uh, if, uh, I'm not sure if we can play it out on the screen if it's available. We could okay. definitely play out the FAR copy, right. which clearly talks about Karti.